Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of PlayStation Pursuit. Just like when I order pancakes, I got myself a short stack of PS1 games um, from my favorite store, Voltage Video Games. Um, I popped over there, actually to the Downtown Voltage, because there are two, I want to differentiate. I went to the Downtown one this time, brought in some trade-ins that I got, uh, some junk games that I had. Uh, no offense, Voltage, no, they're your junk now. But uh, just junk in terms of stuff I didn't need or want, and uh, wasn't going to sell either. So I uh, put those into a nice little bag and brought them to Voltage, and I got some PS1 games for the collection so stick around and I'll show you what those are so prior to going to voltage I was coming home from a business trip and I stopped at a thrift store out of town and found a PS1 game for two bucks and it was one I didn't have um, and it was called Disney's 102 Dalmatians Puppies to the Rescue. And sometimes Disney games can be really fun, sometimes they're hit or miss, but um, I'm looking forward to seeing where this one is on that scale. I always have scales when I'm talking about uh, pickups. Like, this game falls on this scale, and then this game falls on this scale. But uh, this will fall on the uh, Disney game scale and the uh, cartoony action platformer scale. We'll see where it falls on both those scales. <laughs> Make it up scales. But uh, anyway, uh, so then I... Uh, moving on from that one pickup I got at the thrift store, I went to Voltage Video Games, and like I said, I traded in some stuff for, uh, you know, it wasn't a ton of stuff, so I didn't get a lot of games, but I, you know, every little bit counts towards this uh, growing PlayStation 1 collection. So, first one I got is just a, I think it was two bucks, one I didn't have, I don't think. Uh, it's called Caesar's Palace, so it's a Vegas games kind of collection, so I uh, got that one added. And then, uh, this next one looks visually a lot like the Colony Wars series, which I mentioned last episode because I got one of them and then I had the other two. Um, but it's a Star Trek game, Star Trek Invasion. And uh, it's in great shape, has pretty cool disc artwork, and uh, like I said, in fantastic shape. So pretty cool. I'm looking forward to checking that one out. And then uh, this is one I played the demo of back in the day, really liked it. Then I played the Dreamcast version uh, more through it. I think I rented it, but I never owned this game. And time has gone by. I, I don't know why I didn't pick it up yet. So when I was uh, getting games with my trade credit, I was like, ah, I'm going to get this one out of the way. And that is Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver, which has some fantastic graphics for PS1. The world-changing effect when you go from the regular world to the soul world or whatever it was it's been so long i can't remember um was such a fantastic effect and even on the ps1 version you know the dreamcast version is the top version of this or maybe pc um this was super impressive for the console so i'm very excited all right so like i said it's a short stack this episode so i'm gonna take a quick break talk about some playstation favorites and then when we come back i'll show you the rest of it Okay, I got two more PlayStation favorites to talk about this episode. All right, the first one is a game actually in a kind of popular series. Not really a well-known series, but I know in Japan it's popular. And there's been a lot of games in this series. Um, so whether or not it's a super popular series, it's been going on for a long time. I don't know what the first one was, actually, but um, it's been going through many, many platforms. Uh, there was one, I think the most recent one that I'm aware of was on 3DS. Uh, that one's called Crash City Mayhem, but the series is the Runabout series. I had one for Dreamcast, there's another one on PS1 I need to get, um, and then various other games uh, like the Crash City Mayhem I mentioned and everything. Definitely a pretty fun series. But the one I'm talking about is actually called Felony 1179. It is in that same series, and it plays similar to that series. Basically what it does, it's not a racing game, it's kind of like a cause destruction and mayhem game running errands from point A to point B. So uh, if you've played Midtown Madness on original Xbox, that's another game similar to this and everything. Um, it even kind of has some in common with like Crazy Taxi or one of those types of games where you're, there's like an open map and you get to go throughout it. And that's one of the things I really think is impressive about this. So right out the bat, it's got PlayStation graphics. So take that for what you will. Some people are going to look at this game and go, oh, it's disgusting. I think it looks great. I think it looks really good for the PS1 because there's so much going on. It, you know, you play, like, games even last generation and the generation before there'd be, like, you know, only a few people walking on the street because of technical lim limitations. They were like, yeah, we're only going to have a few people and stuff. In this game, I feel like 
even with the technical limica limitations, they were like, we'll still put a low poly, low polygon model of a of pedestrian or chairs on the street and stuff. So it makes the game feel really lush and full of tons of stuff. And you get tons of points for all the destruction you get. And I believe there's only like three three maps or something like that there's not a lot but they're very open like i said and you get a little mini map so moving around them is really fun and seeing what is in the environment's fun breaking through the windows of like a galleria style mall and stuff are just really fun little touches uh to the game and i is the thing about the series is some of the games i've played i enjoy and some of them i haven't uh, this happens to be one that i actually loved um the i want to play the other one for ps1 which Hopefully, fingers crossed, I can get one of these days. Um, but this game I wanted to talk about because it's not expensive. It's under $10 most places. Um, if you see it for more than $10, hold off because you can get it for less than $10. Um, and I don't think it's going to spike anytime soon. But it's a really cool game. And like I said, in a really cool series. And I got to get a new case for this. Look at all the crap. It's like the car is crashing through the artwork and hitting the glass. That's how, <laughs> how bad this is. But, or plastic glass. I have glass cases for my PS1 games. But um, pretty cool game. Definitely one of my favorites for the system. So check it out. Okay, so the next game I'm going to talk about is kind of a polarizing game. I know, personally, I know somebody who absolutely hates this game. I know a lot of people who love it, and I know a lot of people who are like, meh, about it. And then online, I know there's a lot of people who either really, really love it or really, really hate it. Um, I kind of fall somewhere in the medium to high like spectrum, like 7, 8 out of 10 <laughs> spectrum. Um, there's another spectrum. Man, I'm always talking about spectrums on, this episode, or on these uh, episodes. But uh, this game is a Squaresoft game that is not an RPG. Um, it is Erguys, or Erguys, or Ergies, I don't know, I, I pronounce it Erguys. Um, it says, God bless the ring, which is such a funny subtitle, or a headline, I guess, because it's above it. Um, and uh, as you can tell, it's got Cloud from Final Fantasy VII, and I believe uh, Sephiroth is unlockable too. Um, yeah, he's on the back of the box. A lot of cool little Final Fantasy references in this, but it is a fighter, first and foremost. And it reminds me of, um, not as good, but the style of fighter is a lot like Power Stone, if you've ever played Power Stone 1 or 2, where you move around in 3D space. It's not on a 2D plane like a lot of the fighters of the era. So at the time, I thought that was really cool. And it's really got clean, sharp graphics, which is another thing I liked back in the day, is it looked a lot better than some of the chunkier, you know, early fighters like Ballerina Toshinden and all that stuff, which are good fighters, you know, especially back in the day. Now they don't hold up as well. But um, this game, I think, definitely is a cool, unique fighter for the era and one of my favorite things about this game i said it wasn't an rpg it is a fighter first and foremost but there is a rpg adventure mode it's like a dungeon crawling adventure game but you still fight in 3d and that is a little clunkier than the main game but it also is really cool and it runs at a higher resolution than the game i i remember when i played i was like whoa the resolution seems upped a little bit on this part um but it's a really cool game whoa and it's falling out of my case um but uh I liked it a lot. I, uh, I've had this since I was younger, so um, I have a little bit of a bias of it being a classic uh, childhood game for me, but um, I really thought it was cool. And I think a lot of people that love it, it's because it's square and it has cloud and everything, but I think take out those elements, like don't even think about that it's published or developed by Square and that Cloud and Sephiroth are in it. Just look at it as a unique game. And it's part of that era, that that sweet spot for Square where they went from classic RPGs and then branched out into some other things um, before, you know, they may merge with Enix and made Square Enix. But um, I really, really, really liked uh, what I played back in the day. And it's uh, one that I always like to go back to once in a while. So if you can find it for a decent value, definitely check it out okay so the next game i got from voltage is actually a long box title one i didn't have and it looks like a one-on-one -on -one fighter it might not be any good but it's published by a company i always love the name vic tokai They've nes games and onward i've had many games by them in the past but anyway it's uh criticom and it's uh one of these style with the uh stickers and hard plastic case um one of those style long box and uh like I mentioned before, they always have cool back art behind the disc, like that. And then even behind the manual, there's back art. I thought that's really awesome. It looks really, really cool, actually. Um, but yeah, so it might not be a good fighter, but I didn't have it. And uh, really glad that it had all the pieces and parts, so it's a pretty cool addition. The next one is another one-on-one -on -one fighter. And uh, I think it's been going up in price, so I think I got it for a pretty good deal. And uh, it's 
got 2D graphics, so I love 2D fighters. I'm looking forward to seeing how this one looks. And it is Gundam Battle Assault 2. So pretty cool, in fantastic shape. Glad to have it. And uh, like I said, 2D artwork. Gotta check it out. I do love sprites after all. Even though this is the PlayStation Pursuit, I'm still a sprite lover. Um, the next game I got is uh, the second of this brand on the PlayStation, but I don't have the first one yet. Um, and I actually stopped watching the show at this point <laughs> this game is based off of, so um, I don't really have much to base it on. But uh, it's Transformers Beast Wars Transmetals. This had an N64 port as well, which I believe is pretty uncommon. Might be pricey, I don't know. I've been keeping track of N64 as much lately. Um, so it might not even be that great of a game, but it's in pretty good shape. I'd say... Like, most of it is a 9 out of 10, but then the back art, there's a little warping underneath, but nothing major. Um, but still pretty cool to have that addition to the collection as well. And then, the very last game I got. Now, admittedly, it does have some issues to the manual, but um, it's a cool game. And I got a really good price, thanks to my buddy Alex, who works at Voltage. He... You know, looked at the condition and definitely gave me a really good price considering, you know, he noticed some things on it that he was like, yeah, this should be a little underpriced anyway. Um, so thank you again, Alex, for taking a few bucks off this. That's a pretty cool game. I love this series and I've never played the first one. And it is Guilty Gear, Atlas published title. And the two things wrong with it mostly were the top of the manual is pretty scuffed up um, and then a little bit of the back of the manual. Let me open it up a little crinkly, but um, the disc looks great and everything. And then the... Um, front of the manual also has it's not on the case it's in the manual underneath there's a, a gunky substance which did start to come off when i was scraping at it but it was kind of like grossing me out too because i don't know what it is and i didn't want to get it under my nails but i'll take uh, some time to try and clean that up but if you haven't played the guilty gear series it's a pretty cool one-on-one -on -one 2d fighter um with great animation cool character design and a really rocking soundtrack i used to listen to it uh because it's like instrumental heavy guitar and i thought that was pretty cool um great game I'm glad to have that added to the collection so that was the short stack uh, on behalf of uh, voltage and alex so thank you um next time i have uh pancakes for breakfast i'll be thinking of you alex um but uh so yeah that's uh that's the stack for this game so for this episode so let's see what the number is at i'm actually excited because if you remember the number from last episode i'm reaching a milestone so let's see if i've crossed it Okay, here we go. 501 PlayStation 1 games. So I have now crossed the 500 mark, which is pretty cool. I'm really excited. Um, it's still not halfway, but it's that much closer to a full set. And uh, as you've seen, I've gotten some really cool games in the first 500 games for the PS1. I have some of the heavy hitters out of the way. I've got some screaming deals and uh, a lot of games that I personally been looking for too. So my PlayStation collection behind me, well for one, it's getting too big for this shelf and I promise you this room is gonna change. There's gonna be a cool PlayStation Pursuit backdrop for future episodes. Um, and I'm super excited to actually lay that out because I've really got some cool games so far and the collection just keeps growing. So thank you everybody for supporting me along the way, helping out. I've got a lot of great uh, gifts towards the PlayStation Pursuit pursuit from some really good friends so i appreciate that and then of course just people keeping an eye out for me and everything uh you know is super appreciated so and then of course everybody watching the episodes i really appreciate you uh rooting me on and uh giving your thoughts on some of the games i talk about so that's this episode thank you so much for watching like subscribe comment hug whatever you want to do send me a text message whatever you want to do I i'm all for everything so <laughs> until the next episode i'll see you guys later